Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on the politics in France's overseas departments. So today's episode was requested by Nick C. on YouTube. It's a little different from some of the other political party episodes I've done, but hopefully it can still be entertaining. So first off, what are the overseas departments of France? When you think of France, you probably think of places like Paris, Marseille, and is generally centered on mainland Europe, with Corsica usually also thought of. However, the French state controls not just the region from the Pyrenees to the Rhine. France went out and colonized large portions of the world in the early modern period. And while generally we consider that colonial empires are dead and gone, it still has some far-off territories from its colonial days. This overseas France can generally be divided into two separate categories. First, there are the overseas collectivities, which are regions that have increased autonomy and a special status, but still are French. Then there are the overseas departments slash regions, which are administratively considered the exact same as the rest of France, with French law there the same as it would be in Nice or Léon, and is what we are going to be examining today. Think of how Hawaii and Alaska are separate from the rest of the US, but are still considered as American as Ohio or California. There are five overseas departments slash regions. There's Guadalupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guiana in the Guiana region of South America, and Mayotte and Reunion in the Indian Ocean. I should probably explain the difference between a region and a department. So a region is a large area of France that is administratively joined together, such as the Ile de France region, which is essentially Greater Paris. Then there are the departments, which are smaller territorial units that will make up a region. So something like the city of Paris itself is a department. In the five overseas departments slash regions, each territory is its own department and region. What this means for understanding politics in these regions is that there are different administrative bodies that represent the territory at the departmental level and the regional level. Well, not quite. The French Guiana, Martinique, and Mayotte have decided to merge their departmental and regional councils together, while in Guadalupe and Reunion, the department and regional councils are not merged together. I should also note that France itself is a unitary state, meaning the central government tends to dominate over local governments. So just because a local government is a certain way, you shouldn't expect the government to act radically different from the rest of France. So what are some of the similarities of these overseas regions? Well, all are obviously quite far away from the motherland. They also are, quite frankly, quite poor. Out of the 18 regions that make up France, the overseas regions in terms of their GDP per capita are the five poorest in France. They all have high levels of unemployment, and poverty is often quite high in these regions. It perhaps isn't surprising, considering quite frankly these regions are both, one, far away from the rest of France, so most French politicians will rarely think about them, and two, mostly non-white, so there perhaps could be the lingerings of colonialism present in the administration of these regions. You can often find white minorities in these regions, holding most of the economic power, which can often be the source of tension. These regions suffer from high rates of illegal immigration. Since France is in the EU, if a migrant enters into any region of France, they can then make their way into any other part of the EU. For migrants looking for a better life in northern Brazil, the Leeward Antilles, or the east coast of Africa, it can seem like a very easy place to sneak into, and then possibly move to somewhere else in the EU. These places also generally tend to do slightly better economically than its neighbors, but this can depend a lot on the neighbor and the region. This often can create tension, as residents feel like migrants are using up services in the territory, not paying their fair due in taxes. These regions, like all regions in France, vote for deputies in the National Assembly, in EU elections, and for the president of the country. So we'll also talk about its current deputies and senators, and how it voted in the latest presidential and EU election. Also, most of these overseas regions recently had regional elections, so we'll talk about the new factions that just gained influence there. I should also note, politics in these regions tend to have small localized parties, or independents, who run and operate in them. This can make finding information on them incredibly difficult, more so because it's all in French, and I speak just English. So sadly, I'm not going to do what I normally do, and dive into every party and explain the support base and politics around it, but more just mention it. These small parties tend to be affiliated in some way to larger French parties, 
and this can help us understand their political leanings. I made an episode recently talking about these parties, but just in case you forgot or you didn't listen to that episode, here's a very brief reminder on the parties. First off, there is the Republicans, the mainline conservative party of the country, there is RN, a hard-right nationalist party, UDI, a center-right liberal party, LREM, the party of current president Macron, MoDem, a liberal ally of Macron, the Socialist Party, a moderate center-left party, FI, a socialist party, EELV, an environmentalist party, and the Communist, who are communist. Another small thing, every single region voted for LREM's Macron to become president over RN's Marine Le Pen in the second round of the presidential election, so I won't mention it. And also, the recent EU election had god-awful turnout for every single overseas region, so just keep that in mind when hearing the EU results. With that, let's go to our first region, the Caribbean islands of Guadalupe. These islands have a very large black population, with a small white and Asian minority. It tends to economically do better than the other overseas regions, with an economy largely based on tourism and banana production. In 2009, the islands experienced a massive strike, from the island's population who protested the poverty, unemployment rate on the islands, and the high cost of living. The strike resulted in the French government meeting several protester demands, but poverty and unemployment still are very present. Within the departmental council, there are essentially two political camps. With 25 seats is United Guadalupe, Solidarity, and Responsibility Party, or GUSR, and its allies. GUSR is a moderate center-left party that is affiliated with and works with LREM. It is opposed by the Socialist Party's branch on Guadalupe, and its allies who hold 16 seats. In the regional council, it's pretty much the same story. GUSR has 33 seats, while the Socialist Party's branch has 8 seats. The head of the regional government, and therefore the de facto head of the region, is Ari Shalot, who is affiliated with GUSR, and also, apparently, he has had a couple corruption cases against him. In terms of members it sends to national parliament, it sends four deputies to the National Assembly, and three senators to the Senate. Two of the deputies are independents who sit with MoDem, one is a member of GUSR and sits with LREM, and one is a member of the Socialist Party. Two of its senators are members of the Socialist Party, and one is a member of GUSR, who again sits with LREM. In the first round of the 2017 presidential race, Macron was the most voted for candidate, getting 30% of the vote, with Guadalupe actually being the region that voted for Macron the most in the first round. The next two most voted for candidates were FI's Mélenchon, with 24% of the vote, and the Republicans' Fion with 14% of the vote. In the 2019 EU elections, RN was the most voted for party, getting 24% of the vote. LREM's Alliance of Liberal Parties got 18%, while FI got 13%. The Socialist Party also received the most votes here out of any other region, getting 9% of the vote. We go south from Guadalupe into the island of Martinique. It is quite similar to Guadalupe. It's majority black. Tourism makes a large part of the economy. Poverty and unemployment is high and it protested in 2009. In the Assembly of Martinique, you have four different political groups. The largest is the Martinique Progressive Party, PPM, and its allies. This party worked with several other smaller progressive and left-wing parties and the Socialist Party, and has 26 seats. Next, there is the Martinique Independence Movement, or MIM, a party that argues for Martinique to become independent. And from the limited information I have gathered, is leftist in its outlook. It worked with EELV and the Communists in the latest election, and has 14 seats. After that, there is the Martinique Together Group, a collection of small left-wing forces in the country, and has six seats. Finally, there is the PEA Group, a breakoff of the MIM, with five seats, and worked closely with other left-wing forces and FI. The assembly is headed by Serge Letichimi, who is affiliated with PPM. He has made it a goal to fight against racism, and wants greater autonomy for the island. In terms of its presence in Parliament, it sends four deputies to the National Assembly and two senators to the Senate. Currently, one of its National Assembly seats is vacant, but the other three seats are controlled by a member of PEA, who sits with the Communist, a member of PPM, who sits with the Socialist, and an Independent, who sits with the Socialist. In the Senate, there is one member of PPM and a member of the Franciscan Popular Movement, with both senators sitting with the Socialist. In the first round of the presidential election, Mélenchon got the most votes, with 27%, and then Macron with 25 and Fion with 16 Martinique would be the region that voted for Mélenchon the most. In EU elections, LREM got 18% of the vote, RN got 16% of the vote, and FI got 13%. We go further south to French Guyana, the largest of the territories we will be talking about. 
It is quite similar to the two Caribbean islands we have talked about, but also quite different. It has a large black population, but also a sizable indigenous Amerindian community and a Southeast Asian community. The Amerindian community has fought for land rights and increased autonomy from the French government, who the Amerindians see as threatening their culture and way of life. These communities have also been threatened by illegal mining and timber operations in the interior of the territory, which is hard to access for authorities due to poor infrastructure and most people settling along the coast. The territory did experience protests similar to the ones in the Caribbean in 2009 and in 2017, but likewise has seen little change from the government, with poverty and unemployment still being present. In the Assembly of Guyana, there are two factions present. First, there is Pea Guyana, a left-wing group backed by FI and Generation S, a breakoff of the Socialist Party, and has 35 seats. Next, there is Guyana Gathering, a centrist group backed by LREM and has 20 seats. It is headed by Gabriel Serville, a member of Pea Guyana. He wants to crack down on illegal mining in the region. It sends two deputies to the National Assembly and two senators to the Senate. It has one vacant deputy seat, and right now only has one deputy who is a member of LREM. In the Senate, there is one member of Guyana Gathering, and another is a member of the New Force of Guyana, a small center-left party, with both senators sitting with LREM. In the first round of the presidential race, Mélenchon won the most votes with 25% of the vote, followed closely by Le Pen who won 24% of the vote, and Macron with 18% of the vote. In EU elections, RN got 27% of the vote, EELV got 18% of the vote, and LREM got 17% of the vote. We move away from the Caribbean into the Indian Ocean with the island of Mayotte. Mayotte is located between Africa and the island of Madagascar, and is located in the Comoros Island chain, where most people are Muslim, with Mayotte being one of the most Islamic places in France. Its economy is largely based on agriculture. Mayotte is actually a disputed territory. The country of Comoros claims Mayotte belongs to them, while France claims the island doesn't want to join with Comoros. To simplify everything down, when Comoros was being decolonized, the territory, which was entirely under France, had a referendum on independence, with the majority of people in the Comoros island chain voting for independence, but not on Mayotte, where the people there voted to remain with France, who feared that an independent Mayotte might mean economic struggles without French government assistance. Comoros claims that since the territory as a whole voted for independence, then Mayotte should be with them. African countries back Comoros' claim, but France is strong enough to essentially have its way, and Comoros can only really make diplomatic protest. Mayotte struggles a lot with handling illegal immigration. Around 35% of the population is not from French territory, with many being Comoros citizens who have moved to the island to try and enter France. It has created so much tension that the island actually had protests in 2018, over the massive immigration taking place on the island. In the departmental council, there are five different factions, and these factions I could find pretty much no information on. The largest is a group of 12 centrists, which is also made up of members of LREM and MoDem. Then there is a group of six rightist politicians. Then a group of four members of the Republicans. Then a group of two members who are vaguely left-wing. And another group of two members who seem to be center-left. The head of the region is Ben Issa Usani, a member of the Republicans. Mayo sends two deputies to the National Assembly and two senators to the Senate. One deputy is a member of the Republicans, while another is an independent politician aligned with LREM. In the Senate, one is a member of LREM, while another is a member of the Small Movement for the Development of Mayotte, which sits in the LREM group. In the first round of the presidential elections, it was the only region Fion won a plurality in, getting 33% of the vote. Le Pen got 27%, and Macron got 19%. In EU elections, it was the region that most voted for RN, with 46% of the vote going towards RN. The Republicans also won 17% of the vote, the most they got out of any region, and FI won 9% of the vote. The last territory we will go towards is Reunion, also located in the Indian Ocean. It is a very diverse culture, with French people, African descendants, Chinese, and Tamal people all living on the island. It is better economically than many of the other overseas regions, but is still relatively poor. Sugar and tourism are the two main drivers in the economy. In the departmental council, there are eight factions. First, there is a collection of leftist forces who have 12 seats, a collection of centrist forces that make up 10 seats, and a collection of rightist forces that make up 8 seats. Six members are affiliated with the Socialist Party, while four members are affiliated with the Republicans, and two members are communists. Finally, two are members of another rightist bloc, another two are members of a center-left bloc, and finally, four are independent. In the regional assembly, there are only two groups. For reunion, 
or PLR, is the largest group, with 29 members. It is made up of the left wing for Reunion Party, and was allied with FI for the election. The second branch is the Objective Meeting Group, which is made up of right wing forces with the Republicans and UDI backing this group. It is currently headed by Huget Bilo, a member of the PLR. She has argued for free public transportation, wants to fight against racism and other inequalities, and reduce wages for public officials. She also was apparently accused of being hostile, and even racist, towards white people after responding to jeers from people protesting her handling of a shark attack. Yes, this is in fact a real thing that happened. Reunion says the most members out of any of the overseas regions to Parliament, with seven deputies and four senators. Two of its senators are members of the Republicans, while another two are independents who sit with the Republicans. One is a member of the Socialist Party, another is a member of FI, and the last is a member of PLR who sits with the Communist. In the Senate, one is a member of UDI, one is a member of the Republicans, one is a member of LREM, another is an independent who sits in the Independent Liberties and Territories group. In the first round of the presidential election, Mélenchon won 24% of the vote, while Le Pen won 23% of the vote, and Macron won 19% of the vote. In EU elections, RN won 31% of the vote, FI won 19% of the vote, and LREM won 11% of the vote. It was the region that most voted for FI. So putting it all together, where does that leave us? Well, I'd say in the Caribbean territories, it is more of a race between the left and the center, while in the Indian Ocean territories, the right has a far bigger presence. The territories have their own unique political parties and factions, but they tend to ultimately connect back to some of the larger parties found in metropolitan France. I'm really sorry if this episode is kind of vague on a lot of the policies in the territories, and also it's just started raining, so I apologize if you can hear rain at all, but I hope you still enjoyed. If you really want, I can also talk about the um, the politics of places like French Polynesia, New Caledonia, those overseas collectivities, because I know they have their own political parties, and I think there might actually be a little bit more information on them, but I could be completely wrong on that. But up next, I'll work on the history of Botswana, and then Romanian parties, and then Spanish parties, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.